Hey guys, and today I kind of have a new type of video. I didn't ever do this before, but I thought I might as well because we're kind of at a point where I'm doing a lot of work behind the scenes and you guys don't get to see any of it. And I'd rather not just go mute on my channel and not have any videos to put out, uh, you know, because of the way that the YouTube meta is. Anyways, so I thought I would give you guys a little insight into one of the projects I've been working on. I actually have quite a few. Um, and I'll probably showcase some of them, but this one more specifically because it's such a big project. Anyways, so a while back I made a server that did uh, Call of Duty style gameplay with zombies, and uh, there was waves, and I put it on a server, and there was like skins and everything like that, and then I realized that expanding it sucked, like big time, like really bad, like adding a new weapon would take me hours, and I would hate it. So what I decided to do is completely throw away literally everything except for the builds and uh, just start from scratch. And um, as you guys might have guessed, Benny definitely loved it. He was like, oh, I am so happy to remake every single model that we ever had. Um, but it was 100% necessary. There was a few major flaws in the original creation. The 3D models were using 1024 x 1024 texture sizes. If you know how voxel models work, Essentially, when we make the models, we use Cubic Studio, not Blockbench, and that's because Cubic Studios has voxel models. So if I go into voxels, this thing is made out of entirely voxels. And what I can do with this is there's a lot of tools, and it's kind of like building a, a base, right? So you just, you know, put your blocks, right? And you build from there. Um, the advantage to this is that if you want to make skins, you literally just pull up the voxel version and you can use all these paint tools. So I can just do this and boom, I have a skin. I mean, there's a little more that goes into it in terms of design, but it's a lot easier to do than if you were doing element models. The other advantage, um, is that it's just easier to make these than element models. Element models take a lot of time and care and I have a lot of respect for that. And then the third advantage to why I do voxel models is because, uh, just the style. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but this art style... I feel looks way better than if you tried to implement this using like smooth elements. I'm not a big fan of the smooth elements. I like the pixel art kind of look, kind of vibe. So voxel models are really useful if you do them right. And before we did them wrong, um, we had a basically no, I had no rules with the resource pack. So when you create the voxels, you have a couple into actual elements you can use in the game. You can make one element per cube, which is incredibly bad. You have one per color palette which is okay, you're gonna get less elements, but your texture file is, your texture file is gonna be way smaller, but you're gonna get more elements. And then you have one element per surface. This gives you the minimal number of elements. And the number of elements you have correlates to um, how laggy, quote unquote, you could call the word laggy, but uh, how many things it needs to render in the game. Uh, and then it all, but the problem, the negative of this is it generates a texture, one texture that it wraps and use every element uses. So you can see what it did. It kind of procedurally generated some elements and you can see all of the different ones it created. You can see that uh, it kind of grouped all these together as one big box because it doesn't change size and it does a pretty good job at this. What this actually really complicated looking model ends up being 177 voxels. Now, if I were con to compare this with a previous one, I guess it would have been a better example to pull up the AK because um, we had the AK before. Um, but this in the previous method would have been maybe 400 or 500 elements. So we're with the new method, basically I am specifying that the voxel atlas has to be 256 or lower. And that's, that's caused the Benny a lot of grief with his model creation because it, it puts some hard limits. It means that the smallest size of cube you can get is this size, uh, which makes some things difficult like scope. See, he only has a two by two air hole through here. So you have some issues and you can only build within this build plane. Otherwise it won't be loaded in the game because that would be too much space. Uh, so there's a lot of limitations, but the key advantage is that the game, like I can record with this on pretty fine. Um, there's not as much the game has to render. And the second key advantage to before is that now everybody can use the resource pack because a 256 by 256 sized texture file is acceptable on all computers. But a 512 by 512 or more is not acceptable on computers with lower end graphics cards. It will legitimately just crash the computer. I think 1024 was the real size that crashed computers, but 256, uh, but 512 is still pretty laggy and gives you way more elements. 256 is kind of like a sweet spot. So that's what we're limiting all our models to, and they still come out pretty nice. I think that looks pretty good. I don't know about you guys. Some people don't like the design of voxel art, but those are the same people that don't like the design of pixel art. So it's, it's an art style. 
Um, and it's a lot easier for us to adapt and add skins to. You just tell it to reference a different texture. Anyways, so we have those. We remade some of the guns. These ones that I remade, they're not good. I just downscaled uh, and fixed up. These are ones that he actually remade. And we have a ton more things that are new and some remakes. Now, as for other things in the map, so if you saw it before, we had the perks. We changed all the perk machines to use exactly the same model so that, again, less things to render. This thing has like four elements in it, so super easy to render. Uh, and you just, it's one model, and then I just say which texture file to reference. And the texture files are like, I think, 128 or 64 they're way smaller which is pretty nice the other advantage uh now this is all just kind of texture pack stuff that i'm discussing here now i guess i'll jump into the next because that's that's pretty much all for the changes we made in terms of what benny does um, benny is my modeler if you guys don't know uh so then we have the stuff that i do so let's go into that why did i change all of the code so let's go into uh, i'm i'm hesitant to show you guys too much of the code uh I'm just going to give you some brief overviews of what happens when what happens. So this is the, I'll show you some stuff. So this is the gun code. So the gun code has some distinct changes here that are really nice. So you, compared to before, before when I added a gun, it was uniquely tied to the uh, zombies. So if I wanted to make multiplayer, then I had to add a gun to multiplayer and I had to add a gun to zombies. But now I can just do data pack. Let me show you data pack list. So we have COD and that is just COD and then you have COD guns. So COD guns contains all the guns, handles all the reload, the ammo, the stats, all that stuff internally. Now in terms of um, getting new ammo, and dealing damage that's handled in the world pack so zombies will have its own way of dealing damage but it always references the same functions uh, so we're all good there now the other advantage is that now i have it set up very organized you have type then you have what type of gun it is so we go into m1911 these are all the files that are used for exactly that that gun there's no files anywhere else in any of the data pack that say the word m1911 that use m1911 besides in this type folder and in this directory that tells you which type it is other than that nothing nowhere nothing nada not for the signs not for the by signs not for anything nothing nowhere okay so that's the advantage of this method as of before when i added a gun i had to add um it to the type list then I had to add it to the pack-a-punch list, then I had to add it to the mystery box list, then I had to add it to the buy wall list. So, big advantage there. Then we have get. Get is gonna have, uh, just tells you which skins to use. So it just goes through a directory and it lets you pick a skin default is the only ones available right now. So, so then we have the other uh, system going on. It's a little bit more robust, but uh, the other big change besides how I completely reprogrammed all the code to be really nice to work with um, is editor mode. So editor mode is actually going to be in this version way more robust. You'll be able to make a zombies map completely without any command blocks or coding. Uh, well, you might need a command block, but no messing with the data packs. So you open the editor menu. There's not too many new tools. Uh, there's standard map tools as before, but I did add support for custom doors. So you can see this is a custom door here, and if I right click it, it will clear just the structure, and it cleared the structure based off of uh, a safe structure over here, and it will tell you the structure when you get near it. So there's a lot more things in the editor mode that will help you. It tells you what room you're in as you enter a new room, and uh, with the room ID, room spurk is before. If you're in a room, then it spawns zombies in that room or any ones that overlap. Uh, all doors and buy signs, you can crouch and right click and you can change what structure it references. If you do none, by default it doesn't reference a structure, but you can hit the right arrow to list any of the structures. This says structure 13, but keep in mind that if you actually establish this thing with a name other than the word structure, so you can actually put like, you can rename the command block that you use to build the structure to rubble, then it will say the word rubble in here, and it won't say 13. But since we didn't rename it, then it's just going to say 13, um, so we know the difference. Now you can actually edit the cost, so I can make it cost that much, or that much, or that much, and it will dynamically change the cost. And when I close it, it will replace the rubble if you're in editor mode, just so that you can reset the door. Regular doors also work uh, the same as usual, where you have the iron door and it will open and close the iron door, just as you would expect. 
Now, as for zombie spawning, it's actually a lot more robust. You have zombies that spawn if it's on the floor, then zombies spawn in the ground. If it's not on the floor, then the zombies just drop. Uh, it might look a little weird on wood though, because it makes like a dirt sound. We might be able, I, I can change settings for that. Uh, and I guess the last thing that I'll show you guys today is, I'll, before we just get into some gameplay, is some custom enemies. So I actually added custom enemies. Uh, this is the Yeeter. There's no more. You can delete the entity or you can cycle because you can have multiple. And what it lets you do is it lets you pick what wave these things come. So they come on wave four. Okay. Then you can add deviation. So it'll be either wave four or wave five or wave six. Okay. Then you have HP multiplier. This will be like the zombies have 100 HP this round because it's round 60 or something. I mean, that's not actually real numbers. Then the creepers will have 200. Then you can change spawn chance. So it was supposed to spawn 20 zombies, but instead we're going to spawn 10 creepers because it's 50%. Then you have independent, yes, no. So independent is basically, um, does zombies spawn with them or is this a pure round like hellhounds? Then locked, locked is will this actually work or not? So if you say yes to locked, then it something needs to trigger the unlock. So normal waves, if they don't do like some Easter egg, then you will not have the problem of these things spawning. So you can do kind of like um, some maps in uh, COD when you do an Easter egg, new enemy spawn such as crawlers in uh, Kino, I believe. Okay. And that's pretty much everything. And then there's new UI. So you can see there's the uh, health bar and there's these four empty slots for your perks instead of items in your inventory. And when I buy them, they get little Unicode symbols. So you can see, and all the perks are working right now. Okay, so I get the perks and then function cod player perks remove all. Yeah, so a lot of work went into remaking this. And then there's one other change and that's there's wall bang logic. So if I do that, it does 40. If I hit through here, it does less than 40, but it still goes through. But that's because it's wall bangable. Then let me drop the item and reload. So when I shoot this wall, it does not hit them. But if I shoot in the same block, but around the wall, it does hit them. So there's some logic created for custom blocks and it doesn't really lag the server too much. And if you might've noticed, there's some horrible gun animations. Gun animations are supported, but they're pretty bad right now. So I'll show you just uh, one of the good ones. This one is pretty good. There's also spray patterns and I have a piece of code that converts images into spray patterns. Uh, and uh, there's just a lot of things for this one that is better supported. Now you might see a PVP mode come out first since the zombies is, takes a lot more work to put together. So let's just hop into a quick zombies and just play it for fun. Uh, there is some, some issues because I changed a lot of the code uh, with the way the game works. So I still have to fix a few little bugs um, because I basically removed 20 scoreboards in favor of fake players. Uh, so some logics were broken. So I'm still working on busting out those little bugs. Uh, but you can see that the game works and there's magic as well, like double points. There's no like icons for them yet, but I will be doing that. Um, but the waves completely work. It, it Some of the music is missing because I took the song out, but yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. There's, <laughs> it's definitely buggy because I removed those scoreboards, but uh, pretty much everything works. I actually managed to pick up the iron horse armor that dealt damage. That's funny. All right. Uh, and then one last thing, if you haven't noticed, when I took damage, it changed my actual physical health bar. And when you go down, you actually are in the prone position and it says bleeding out. You can still go up and down stairs, but you're actually in the prone position. It says bleeding out. So uh, you can exit that with um, down to exit and I'm out of it. Uh, but yeah, so now downed is a little bit better in terms of accuracy, and you actually can go down. Uh, and then another thing is editor mode. In editor mode, you always have this item, and some of the map tools are actually nice. So uh, you can see that some of them actually have, they're just command blocks, but they have uh, textures to look different. So you kind of know what they are for. And that's just like a quality of life fix. And I'll be adding stuff, quality of life fixes like that for things like, see how Juggernog, there, you know that it's an, a tool when it's enchanted and it shows the model. So I can place Juggernog anywhere, um, but it'll move the original. Uh, and then also there's a uh, block underneath that makes it glow when you get near them. Uh, so a lot of like very tiny fixes, but they actually help improve some things. And obviously 
I don't have one for the gun by walls, but when I do, they'll have like little textures of a sign with the uh, picture of the weapon in front of it. Um, anyways, that's pretty much all the progress I've made so far. Um, very complicated system. In the second episode of this devlog, I'll probably have less less broad stuff to show you, more specific stuff to show you. Um, and uh, yeah, because I kind of went for a broad overview. But anyways, if you guys like this, go ahead and leave a like and uh, let me know what you want to see next. Uh, I'll probably put this on a playlist with more than one of these. I'll, I'll probably do a lot considering how much I get done. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.